My friends, something has changed. The world went from being a Christian society to being one that was kind of post-Christian to being one that barely tolerates Christians. We're going to talk about these changes and how to navigate them and how to still keep reaching people with the good news of the gospel in the midst of all the insanity with a dear friend of mine from Boulder, Colorado, Father Peter Musset. Thanks for being with us. I have been trying long and hard to get Father Peter to come on the show. <laughs> I had to wait till campus ministry cooled down in Boulder. I love this man. Uh, he's he's been the pa how long have you been a pastor there? Uh, campus ministry just over Boulder? ten years. Over just ten over years. Ten so you've seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes, but I've been there. Uh, started sixteen years ago. So what were you, you know. were you doing six years before that? Well, I uh, I was the vicar, and then I went to another parish and came back as pastor. Okay, so you've really been watching up close and personal how culture's changed. And if there's a canary in the mind, mine, it's bolder, right? Because <laughs> yeah. the things that have uh, that we're all experiencing with, with shifting, not only from tolerating Christianity, but coming kind of anti, you're, you're kind of like three, four years ahead of the curve there, yeah. right? Um, before we dive into that and how to navigate it in, in one of the most contentious places to do ministry, I would think, you mm. know? Before we do that, I wanna, I wanna talk about your story. Yeah. What got you into parkour? <laughs> yeah. I think I just parkour. outed him. <laughs> uh, parkour, parkour, yeah. parkour, yeah. parkour, parkour. Yeah. Oh man, I'll tell you though. He is a ninja. I'm not sure I'm supposed to say that. Yeah, no, to no. Say he's a, the ninja priest. I, you know, it was, the first weekend I was in the parish at, at St. Thomas Aquinas, I was like sitting and I had my window open. I was looking at the flat irons and it was just just beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm like typing, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was <laughs> typing. I have like literally nothing to do. I'm like the parochial vicar, no idea. And this homeless guy walks by and he's like, they're training ninjas in the north of Boulder. <laughs> And, uh, and, and like, there was this something that And they happened. probably were. They were. They were. Okay, it, they it, actually were. That's yeah, awesome. And something happened in my heart, and I thought, oh, I want to be a ninja. But I was like, <laughs> what is this homeless guy? So uh, about, I don't know, a few years later, let's say three years later, yeah. um, this guy comes, starts coming around the ministry, and he's like, yeah, well, I... The homeless dude or a ninja? No, this is just some other random guy. He's like, I want to join our CIA. And I'm like, cool, let's talk. And, he, and I was like, well, what do you do for work? He's like, I'm a sensei. I, I'm training ninjas in North of Boulder. <laughs> I mean, who says that sentence? I know, I know. That's awesome. Uh, and so I was like, well, I'll train you to be a Catholic if you train me to be a ninja. So this is, I, wanna, I, want, I want rights to the movie script. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever. It was the best, dude. Did I, you literally practice parkour? I did not do parkour. I did, did not okay. do parkour. But um, remember you telling me about parkour. You're like, there's fight or flight. We should master flight. <laughs> <laughs> I, People try to master fight, but most of the time you're best off just, just running run. away really well. I still <laughs> want to do parkour, I like, but my body, it doesn't, it doesn't function the same Dude, when it started. It, getting old know? is not for sissies. No, it is not. No. no. And we're not that old yet, yeah. but it's happening. Yeah. If, like, like 10 years ago, something would break. You'd be like, I'll fix that. Now it's like, it, well, that'll be messed up for the rest of my life, and then I'll die, and that's all right. Yeah, <laughs> but the Lord loves me. Parkour is a young man's game. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> that's like. So. All right, so <laughs> your your journey to faith. You're not the average guy. No, the, and, you know, not there's uh, there's a million interests in your like I, as you probably just picked up on. You're 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 into craft. You make um, your metal smith, kite flyer, ninja, devout Catholic. <laughs> What, 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 that, that's the really stellar thing about you, is that, that, that faith. So tell me about your journey to faith, your journey to priesthood, and then, then we'll dive into the journey of, of campus ministry. And by the way, feel free to interrupt our conversation. Text your questions to 720-650-0100. Yeah. What, what, what made you who you are? What's interesting, um, at the core of um, my, my youthful project was I want to fit in. I want to have friends. I want to have the experience of communion with another person. And so I was looking around and I was like, well, I, how do I join others? And I thought, well, I'll do stuff. So you go start going to shows. You're like, I'll yeah. go to concerts. And you're like, well, that belonging with going with my brother to the show, that's fun. But I'm looking up there and I'm like, well, 
the band, those are the coolest guys around. So I'll right. join a band. So I learned to play the bass and joined a band. And it, That's and, always the, the lowest hanging fruit for a teenage kid. It's like there's four strings. Right. How complicated could this be? Exactly. Right. So you join the band and then you realize, well, everybody needs t-shirts. So then you're like, well, I'll print t-shirts, you know? And then he needs <laughs> stickers and album design. And I'm like, well, I got a computer. I'll make some stuff. That's and awesome. Then, and so then I just started realizing that like God has given me the great gift of a highly developed practical intellect. I can just make stuff. I can take pictures. I can do all these things. So I just started to let that happen. So getting up to college, all of a sudden being in the band. I love the word practical intellect. I, not yeah. enough of us put names to our charism and gift. Yeah. And because and, and sometimes we think it's almost proud to do that. But when you do that, it's like, okay, Lord, thanks for that. I'm yeah. going to get intentional about that. Yeah. And I'm going to guard that because the evil one hates that part of me. Yes. You know, that's cool. Yeah. So I need to put a name on it. So you go to college. I go to college. And now all of a sudden, like what all, college? Uh, UNC and Greeley. Okay. So, which factors in in a, in a big way. I go up to college and all of these skills that I've developed of being the cool guy in the band, being able to, you know, record bands. You're still and, a cool guy. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, buddy. I think you are. But I go up Not and I have much. zero friends. Yeah. Nothing. Nada. I was actually and like I had had a, I had had a conversion from from the getting out of high school. I went and followed the band Fish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that says uh, something about your headspace. At that yeah. Time. <laughs> it, for those who don't know, it's like the uh, it's like Grateful Dead 2.0. So. It, it truly, but but it was a bit of a downgrade. Like they had some cool grooves, <laughs> but it, like the lyrics, like what are you talking about? Oh, not, not yeah. Talking about and the music, I, yeah. I and I, I remember, I remember, I was in a concert and I was looking around and these people were dancing this music and I was like, why? Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is. I was like, I literally don't have any sense of why no. they're dancing. I'm trying to be the dead, but it just didn't happen. But I came back from that, and I was like, man, my life is so filled with problems. I went and I confessed to my parents that I was just, I was just riddled with um, a life of sin, and I was like, I need help. And so I was coming into college, and I was like, okay, I'm, a, I'm gonna live virtually. So I got chills. I always get the chills when someone tells me something like that, and the only explanation is the direct action of grace. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It's it's epic. Actually, the action of grace was this: is I was sitting there and I was actually looking up into the clouds, and I had a vision of Satan. And uh, do you remember? Do you remember Paul Peralta, like the the Bones Brigade? And there was that like that like there was like this skeleton that looked out, and it was like it was almost like the heavens opened for a second, and and I just saw Satan. I looked around, and was it, it literally like, with your eyes or with with your mind's eye? With my mind's eye. Like it, okay, and, you just envision that. Yeah, and it was like all of a sudden I looked around and I realized that the the environment that I was in was devoid of grace. And I, and I saw just the depravity of what was around me, and I, I thought, this is, I was like, this is horror. I'm living in horror. Oh, my gosh. Okay, and, were there substances involved in this? Yes. Okay, well, I, I want to have you back to talk about that, okay. because you're not the first person to tell me that they had an experience of just evil opening up in front of them while they were on, on some kind of substance, and it's like a warning from God in that moment. Like, yes. you're opening the pit in front of yourself, buddy. Step back. Yeah. And not everybody listens in that moment. Anyway, that that's profound. So, any, yeah. So, so you had that that experience. So I so I'm coming into college, man, and I'm like I have, I'm actually in conversion. I'm I'm like like man, I go to I go to church. I'm there. I'm sitting in the front row. I'm like I want to do this, and I look around, and I'm like the church kids were like not cool. Yeah. <laughs> God bless them. But at that moment, they're not I, listening to the fish. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're not they're not they're not living it. Like I, I just had this vision of what unique people were and I had a I, I, I had a, a cookie cutter of what unique people were if you get the yeah. irony there oh, yeah. like yeah. I and, and and all the Christian kids they just didn't fit any of that, Isn't that amazing and so so I bailed and there's I've, no uniqueness in sin it makes us all the same I mean, you, right you could look at a, a people who are engaged in lust people who are engaged in too much weed people like any sin has a stereotypical like I could tell you're into that you're probably into that. Not not to be too judgmental of people, but it, it it makes us cookie cutter. The devil is not creative. And this has always been the case. There's a there's like a, a traditional pipe rack that they have in Irish pubs, and it has the seven deadly sins with these faces. Wow. Um, you, you'll see it on a rare occasion. And but those faces are all identifiable. You can look and you can see these are the faces that are affected by these sins. 
and it's oh. and it's just wild and it's it's an education for us and it's just something that oh yeah it actually takes our uniqueness wow. which we discover when we draw close to the lord oh. and so i'm there and i'm isolated and i'm trying to live conversion and i don't want i can't i don't fit in with the kids there and i don't fit in with the world wow and so i'm just in the, so i took up a camera and i just started taking pictures i'd go walk and i would just i would have this moment where I started to discover the contemplative life. Wow. But I was lonely, and because I have a highly practical intellect, but I was lonely. And so yeah. I thought, well, I know how to have friends. And I just descended back into sin. Wow. I just was like, well, you know what? I know how to be around people. And then and it's I- this old way. Yeah, I, I went back as a dog would to its vomit, as That's they say. from the Proverbs. Proverbs says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. Yeah. It's a gross image, but it's really powerful. It is, and so I did it. And, um, I, and in the midst of that, I was going through college, and the Lord's voice, like from before, was just crying out to me, come back, come mm. back, come back. And, uh, and I didn't. And one of the worst moments of my life was when I uh, was in just a terrible place, and I was like, maybe I'll go to church. And, uh, oh. and so I, I walk into church, and... Uh, and I'm like, gosh, this church seems a lot more popular than I remember in the past. <laughs> there were cars everywhere. Oh, and uh, I walk into church, and uh, it was Easter Sunday, and I didn't know it. No way. And I was like, I, and, I, and I, but there was this one spot that and I... You just happened to come. Yeah. I just, I just, it, talk about grace. Oh. Like, acting when I didn't know. I walk in, and I, I always remember that there was one, this, this one place, they let people sit in the choir loft for extra seating, and you could always go, because it was right around this corner. And I, I was always looking for the, the most isolated place when I would go to church. Because you don't want to see, because you're cool. Yeah, so I go, and yeah. I, go in this, I, I go to sit on, uh, on this chair that I knew would be open. And on the chair was a Knights of Columbus pamphlet. And it just said, your son could be somebody's priest. And I remember seeing that, and there was something. It was like, it was like lightning bolts shot through my body. And I was oh like, gosh. what is going on? And... Uh, you, as you're converting, you're feeling a call to priesthood at the same time. Yeah. yeah That's well, crazy, man. Well, That's awesome. The Lord has always been calling me, and, and, I could, and I could point back to that. Now, I wasn't done. But I think, I'm thinking of Peter right now. The moment he's like, I'm a sinful man, the Lord, at the same time, is saying, come follow me. I'll make you a fisherman. Yeah. Like, at the same time. It's like the mm. dual calling immediately. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> rad. Right. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So I wasn't done with my sin yeah. yet. And I, kinda, I was still wandering. I was still going along. And, uh, and I, there, was, there was one night, and I had this vision in my head. I was like, uh, my roommates had left, and I was like, I was 21 now. I had gone through all of college, and I was still lonely. All of the, all of the, the need in my heart to actually find people mm. to be with, um, it was not answered. Mm. It was promised, but it wasn't answered. Wow. And so I end up going and, and I'm like, well, I'm going to go and I think I'm going to get drunk alone. I'm like, you're not, you're not supposed wow. to do that. Wow. But I was like, might as well. So I put on a suit because I'm an artist, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I, because I have this vision of like a hobo with a suit on or so I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. As I'm on my way, I hadn't been drinking yet and I end, my bike tire was squeaking. I don't know if you've ever had it where like yeah oh yeah 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 so I decided I don't know how to fix things unlike you mine just squeaks (laughs) until I throw it away. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I decided to fix it, (laughs) and uh, and I so I'm trying to kick my tire back in alignment as I'm riding my bike, real smart. One, two, three. Foot gets caught, thrown over the handlebar of my bike, end up flipping, broke my elbow. I'm a I'm a photography major and a sculpture major. Oh my gosh. Two weeks before the end of the semester, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm ruined. So I just go rage party. Wow. I just rage party all night. Come, wow. I wake up in the, in the morning the next day, and I go to brush my teeth. I, I eventually get a cast on it about yeah, 2, yeah. 3 in the morning, whatever. Yeah. And it felt great, so I went back to the party. It was like it was just nuts. Yeah. And uh, I went to go brush my teeth, and I'm right-handed, and I'm like, oh, no. So I, I'm trying to brush my teeth with my left hand. I'm going to try that tonight. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> I encourage you. This is great. And... Uh, <laughs> And toothpaste all over my mouth, and the voice of the Lord speaks to the depths of my heart. I don't like hear, I don't have a locution, but the voice of the Lord speaks to the depths of my heart and says, You prayed for a moment to come back to me. Give your life to me right now. No. Yeah. I, your parents are praying for you. Deeply. Right? Like, Deeply. I, th- this is the stuff where it's like, you know, 
as an evangelist guy. Like, well, that's my job. Come to an event and I'll say, give your life to the Lord right now. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need us to do that. And it, when mom and dad and grandma are praying, he will literally step in if no one is around. And if there's no campus ministry reaching out to you in that moment, he will step in. Never lose hope for your kids. Right. And my what aunt. Did you, what was your response? And your one, sorry, your aunt. And, and my roommate. My one, so I had, I had two roommates and my roommate, Aaron. Yeah. Um, who was, uh, he was like the, the MC for the Campus Crusade or crew, they call it now. Yeah, yeah. So he was like praying for me and my other roommate who was also like, he was just lost in the new age. And, uh, and so literally, so I'm there and I'm like, yes, Jesus, I give my life to you. Wow. But I don't know the way back. I, I'm like, I, I just feel so far. I don't know the way back. Sorry, I want to soak in that for a second. Can you if, you, if you, if you're watching this and you're like, I don't really get this. Can you please pray that prayer? Yeah. Seriously. Jesus, I give my life to you, and I have no idea what that even means, and I don't know the way back. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so, um, so what do I do? I'm like, well, right on our campus, there was yeah. this, there, it used to be this building that called it the Rock, and it was just right next to the university center. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll just walk over to the campus center. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I walk over, and uh, that month there was this, this ministry that started which was pretty cool. It was called Focus. <laughs> Never um, heard of them. Some of you guys might know. <laughs> have heard no, of it's them. a great campus ministry. And yeah. uh, there's Curtis Martin, and uh, he just says hi. And wow. He's like, yeah, we started this ministry. It's called Focus. And I'm like, I'm a photographer. So mm. that's... I'll do stuff for yeah, you. Yeah, like, well, no, Focus, that's the metaphor. Like, wow. what am I focusing on? Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a contemplative man. I, like, I really believe that... The, that there is a metaphor and that God speaks in the poetry of all things. Mm. And so I'm there. And, mm. uh, and I joined Bible studies, joined John Zimmer's Bible study, joined Curtis Martin's Bible study. I joined, oh, man, I'm, that's like, awesome. I'm like going to praise and worship. And, it, and, it, it, and like all of a sudden, all those church kids that I thought were nuts, that were like lame and not cool, all of a sudden they became illuminated in grace. All of a sudden the scales fell from my eyes and I saw what was real in front of me. And oh. the, 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 this one gal, who invited me to a retreat every single semester for my four years, which I never said yes, yeah. even after my conversion, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but all of a sudden I saw her cur- courage and her love because I mean, wow. I, I had a big Afro. I had, <laughs> I had, I had like, I was like, Dude. I was rock and I would, I wore the most like flamboyant, wild clothing. Mm. And I just, I just was having fun. I was enjoying my life. Yeah. Um, because, of the, but the, but, what was happening is, is the promise of all these other things of the, the vicious life, it, it didn't fulfill it. And all of those, then all of those things became tributary to, um, to actually getting used by Satan. Wow. Is really, is and, just how I look at my I, And I love how the scales fell from your eyes. Because there's, there's a, you know, Thomas Aquinas talks about how sin darkens the intellect. Or as I say, sin makes you stupid. Yes. You know, you literally can't see things. You can't see. There's a web that's woven over all nations, Isaiah. Yeah. yeah. And, and. What was happening and is that I just I, I was blind, yeah. and the Lord was trying to use the things of the world to to actually call me back. And so often we 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 uh, when we're trying to lead people to the faith, we get stuck in all the questions, which are actually coming from a place of like, no, I actually really just like this sin I'm in. I'm really just lost, and I can't see what you're talking about. Well, yeah. don't you get it? Here's the logical case, and here's the logical construct that is Christianity. Yes. Don't you get it? Yes. I'm going to push it into your intellect. No, I literally don't see what you're talking about. Or I see it and it looks ugly to me. Right. The, yeah. The promise, so, so this, is, this is what's hard, is that it, it can, Thomas Aquinas says that we don't choose evil for its own sake. Mm-hmm. We choose a good and it lands us in all of these circumstances yeah. that, that actually mess with our, uh, that, that, that take the goodness that we're trying to choose and, and, and distort it thoroughly. Mm-hmm. So what was happening is, is that I was actually trying to find friendship and love mm. and community. I was trying to find this imminence. And what was happening is, is that I, I, w- I was choosing a route because I had experienced some kernel of it in the worldly life. Wow. And so I was living for the, just that little tiny speck of it. Th- but meanwhile, it was, it was tearing off parts of wow. me. Wow. Wow. And uh, so... You found this community, engaged in the community, and, and then fast forward, here you are. I mean, is it right that life in the community of Christians, 
and, and it, I prayed on the eve of my ordination. Because hmm. they say that, that uh, you can ask God, on the eve of ordination, the Lord always answers that prayer. Hmm. So I went and I said, God, I said, please give me one opportunity in my priesthood to be able to live campus ministry, to do university ministry. One opportunity. He's it, like, no, here's the whole thing. He's like, he's like, how about 16 years? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, we got a question about your when you realized you were called a priest, the aha moment. You know what, though? I want to have you back to talk about that one. Okay. Because I want to fast forward a little right now to the campus ministry topic yes. with our, our depressingly limited amount of time, man. Oh. Uh, but we, we, could have you, we could have you back. We do this again and again. Yeah. Um, you, you experience this conversion. You experience this beautiful call to life and the, the scales falling from your eyes. And, and as a campus ministry priest, like, and, and, and me in, in ministry, it's like, this is all we want to share with people. Yes. And we're so aware that this is the path to life. You know, Kansas City might have life and have it to the full. And more and more, that's falling on, on deaf ears. I mean, the, the web over the nations, that blindness, has never been more profound than it is now, I don't think. It, and, and, it, and, and it's literally, you go to a place like Boulder, they're in classrooms where they're being educated to see the church differently than, than it actually is. Yes. To reinterpret all of Western civilization as white supremacist, to reinterpret the church as um, uh, 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 the patriarchy and the worst expression of the patriarchy, uh, to, to reinterpret everything in the worst light possible, so much so that when you say, hey, here's a big welcome banner, there's milk and cookies, you might as well be you know, having a, a, a Nazi party uh, in the church center with a welcome banner and milk and cookies. You know, and like, hey, we have really good news for you, and here's why it makes sense. But if I'm wearing a Nazi outfit saying those words, you shouldn't listen to me. You shouldn't. I mean, if they are right, they should shut us out before we get the first word out. And we know the word is, I can't see them life. I want to share this with you. Uh, how have you experienced that shift in the Boulder campus? How, how have you seen it? Has, has it, you know, has the wall, that barrier to even being able to open your mouth, has it grown dramatically for you? Tell me about the shift and, and, and frankly, how you get around it. It's, we could spend the next three hours in that. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm overwhelmed by the gravity of, the, of that topic. It, the questions remain the same yeah. in, in all human hearts. So the, the, mm. the best part is, is that w there are so many kids, so many high schoolers who are going into college, and what do they want to know? Am I going to have a friend? Am I going to be loved? I am I going to have a path in life? I mm. Am I going to live a happy life? Mm. Um, it, uh, how am I going to actually contribute? How do my skills mm. and who I am and what I have to offer, how is that going to actually be a beautiful thing? Mm. It's just harder to, to break through and to say, well, a happy life, this is hard because we, the manipulated idea of what a happy life looks like mm. is it's, it's gotten more and more constrained into a very narrow idea of what happiness is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Happiness is license. Happiness is I get to do whatever I want. It's, it's, this, right. it's this distorted so version you, of freedom. So the guy with the collar on are the antithesis of, of my happiness. You've Ex come to take it away. You're the police. You walk into, I walked into a, a grocery store the other day and, um, and with all of the the uh, strangeness of culture. I was, it was particularly liberal grocery store. I'm in Boulder, you know, you choose. We, choose we won't your... name the grocery store, but I always sense when I'm at that grocery store, right. that the person behind the counter probably hates me. <laughs> yeah, the, and, and, and if, I, if I told them I'm a devout Catholic. <laughs> I, I, was fly, I was flying the flag in here and, uh, yeah, oh, and yeah. the stink eye that I was getting from everybody that I was walking by, oh, the, the lack of desire to help me to find the salt or whatever I was trying to find at the time. Was, was astounding, and, and that's where I look, and here is my desire to say, my person can encounter your person, and we can live in, a, in, a, in an actual communion of heart and mind. What's happening is that college students, th that window of ability to have communion with others is narrowed so extremely and is controlled so intensely that they don't feel like they get to participate in the reindeer games anymore. I mean, like, like th th that they're like, how do we actually, they're forced now to create alternative culture, mm -hmm. alternative culture. And, and we were, we always struggle in the Catholic world with the, the Catholic bubble. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we have a hard time saying, okay, well, we, we've created this intense, beautiful environment. Mm. How do we move out of that into say, what we have is essential for the life of everybody. Mm. I, was, I was sitting on the porch with some college guys having some cigars the other night. And, the, and they were like, so Father, tell me, tell me uh, you have a parish, uh, uh, and who's your parishioner? And I said, everybody in the boundaries. And you, they were like, you mean everybody at the university? I said, everybody. everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I said, the beautiful part is, is that I, as the pastor, I have, as this general, I have this bountiful mechanism of means to be able to reach out and to push forward. So when I'm saying, would you guys invite somebody to the dance? Mm. Would you invite them to come and to participate in your Bible study? What I'm saying is, is that I have a moral responsibility to all of them. Mm. So then I walk around on campus and my kids just give me the stink eye. They, they look at me and they look at me with disdain or they look at me with intrigue and fear. Wow. And there's all of these energies, but they say, if I answer the call to Christ, and this is what's really changed in the modern time. Yeah. If I answer this call to Christ, I'm going to be an alien to my own people. Wow. I'm, I'm going to be an alien. They know it means giving up everything. They know it means giving up everything. Joining that club where you get the stink eye. Yep. So how do you, how do you get past that? That's where the, the, the gift that God is sending for the apostles that are in my ministry, because they, they come to me, I like to say this, the, the, the worse your ministry, the, the more you're dealing with just low-hanging fruit. Mm. All you're dealing with is low-hanging fruit. The better your ministry, the weirder and crazier and more difficult and vicious and mm. strange your ministry becomes. So do you have the capacity to deal with the um, Buddhist who all of a sudden prayed a rosary and like th this is, wow. Boulder. we're in Boulder. Yeah, you know, so this happens. This happens. This happened the other day. A guy was like, well, shoot, I'm, I'm praying the rosary. And he said, and I felt instant peace. He said, with my Buddhist practice, all, but what, what I see is, is that it's really, it's hard and, and like I keep on doing all this yoga and nothing's changing. Whereas instantly I'm praying this wow, and I don't understand man. why I'm doing this. Somebody just said, hey, here's- Direct here's, action of grace. Direct action of grace. It's so like, you're, you're, uh, you're collecting the fruits of direct action of grace and trying to still appeal to those fundamental questions that they've had for 16 years of campus ministry. That's the approach. Yes. And- and what's hard is that the promise that's given right now from the world is, it says, it's both aggressive. The promise is, is if you follow, you're going you're gonna to be canceled. You're going to be destroyed. Oh, yeah. You don't get to participate in anything. anything. And so we're going to ghettoize you. Yeah. But then I watch my actual students who are living. Campus ministry students. Yeah, campus ministry students who are actually living this. They're free. They're 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 kinder and better within their mm. sororities and their fraternities. They're on their the individuality teams. stands out. Absolutely, their coaches love them more. That they're like, and then they struggle, and then they come and they're like, I stood up in class today, and I said, mm. your view of what Catholicism is, and and then and I got slammed. How do I do this? How do I do this better? And and then there's other kids in the class that are like shrinking back. It's it's kind of like what we've seen culturally. Oh. Is, is we're gonna burn down your your preg crisis pregnancy clinic. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna spray paint your church. We're gonna right. get so aggressive that you're not gonna live this out. But this is the secret. It's like, it's mm -hmm. like just the stakes are real now, right? And there's a gift in that because I love you when you're hot or when you're a cold. But when you're lukewarm, I vomit you out of my mouth. Mm. And the, the the stakes are, you're hot or cold. It's, so yeah. So that's what I've seen. If, if there's anything, mm. the, the movement is, is that you don't get the lukewarm now. Mm. So it's getting smaller, stronger? Smaller, stronger. And, and, uh, and the kids are dating now. <laughs> so they're going to have kids. It's, we're going to resurge, man. <laughs> I, I, in 16 years, I've seen college students struggle to date. And in the last two years, I have watched like they're, they came out of this isolation and they like they were like Vir virtual is great we love the virtual relationships and then they were like well you're gonna drink it to the dregs it's like oh, go yeah. into the closet and smoke all the cigars oh, yeah. kids yeah well they got so much 
virtual yeah. living that now they're like, we want to be together. They want to have dances. They're, wow. they're, they, okay. they're, they're spending their time physically. They've recognized that they are embodied individuals. Mm. And, and once you live and inhabit your soul and body together, they're like, well, there's hope. Yeah. There's I'm, hope in all this. There's hope. Um, there, yeah, praise God for that. And, and how do you, I mean, one thing that's helping me not burn out with this as a guy with a you know, ministry, and I, I, I mean, it's very frustrating sometimes. Like there's it, the, the limits that the algorithms put on a guy who's trying to get stuff out there. Yep. It, it's real. Yep. It's real. Um, so there was a, the recent shift in Twitter, and my followers were literally stuck at a, a certain number for like years. I'm like, oh, I guess people, it's not my, maybe it's not my thing. Literally went up 100 a day. What is going on? Mm. And so, and so to see that is so annoying. But I, I think very frequently, like what your students encounter, you know, what you encounter when you get the stink eye, uh, we think people want a dialogue. You know, and, and it gets tiring when you don't realize that all they want to do is make you tired sometimes. But this they want to grate on you, yeah. so you just shut up and go away. This is straight out of the playbook from Saul Alinsky. He right. says, define the terms, and violate the terms mm -hmm. because action is reaction. Right. So right. What, what we're living in is not a culture that's that's trying to pursue truth, which is where like we're in Western civilization. I like Western civilization. Let's right. pursue truth right. and build on right. it. Right. No. And 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 then meanwhile, you have this whole this whole movement that says they're playing by different rules entirely, yeah. and they're they're playing with the fact that we're playing by a rule book that, that makes logical sense. Exactly. I, I was just uh, debating with someone the other day on Twitter. And, uh, and, and a, I, I said something bad about Antifa. Imagine that. And the person's like, well, that, all that literally means is anti-fascist. So he's going on and on. It's like, well, hold on. If you're comfortable with leftist violence, you're obviously also comfortable with taking away my ability to define my terms. Right. So that I can't say, no, that's bad. Right. And, and then when I realized that, I just ducked out of the dialogue. I'm like, this isn't actually a dialogue. It, it's, it's a tactic. It's not a dialogue. Right. Right. And this is where wow. your students are finding themselves, this is where you find yourself. How do you stop from burning out? I mean, I, and by the way, thank you for wearing your Roman uh, collar in the grocery store in Boulder. But, and I love you, and people who are watching love you. How, how, do you. how do you keep from burning out in the midst of that? Prayer. That's it. Authentic, uh, an authentic community. You have to be engaged with apostles. And there is one very, very clear thing that's said in the Beatitudes, which is, is uh, essential. It's at the very end. Blessed are you when they persecute you and utter every kind of falsehood against you because of me. Now it's an, it comes in an imperative. Rejoice and be glad on that day mm. because you, because it's you don't want to rejoice. You don't want to say, "Hey, everybody, toast! Hey, they really hate me. Yeah. I'm exiled from all of my family <laughs> and friends. Thanksgiving was terrible, <laughs> right? Like like no. He, he says, "Rejoice and be glad on that day." And so it's a, it, you have to have a technique. So you say, you know what, I got this bottle of port. And when, I, when it's been a really gnarly day, I yeah. get somebody and I say, a toast to this day. Mm. And you, because you, you have to force yourself to say, mm. I'm going to rejoice because this isn't about this. I, I'm not living for here. Mm. I'm not living for happiness. And that's why the, the, the term, you're supposed to be happy. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. We're, we're, we're actually meant to have the joy of the gospel. Yes, it's different than passing bad. happiness. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Brother, thank you for your witness. And oh, your I love you. Oh, I love it's you so too. It's so good to have you down here. Keep, keep doing what you do. Pray for him. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. Man, wasn't that great? Listen, if you don't want to be happy, be sure not to subscribe. But if you want a more joyful life, the kind of life that God created you for, the kind of life Jesus promised when he said, I came to give you life to the full, then make sure you hit subscribe and share this channel with everybody you know.